Hello biologist. We're going to do the mid-unit 4 test review in biology. Let's talk about some of the big ideas first. You need to know the difference between a consumer and a producer, how energy flows in ecosystems, how matter cycles, who helps break down dead matter so it can be used by other organisms. This might be better phrased, what organisms help break down dead matter? Where is the most energy in a food pyramid? Where is the least? Where does the energy go that does not get passed on to the next level? And what is an abiotic factor versus a biotic factor? I'll try to answer these questions as we go through the rest of this presentation. So how much energy is passed on to the next level when you have trophic levels here? Here is a food pyramid. You have the producers on the bottom. They store energy from the sun. They're in most ecosystems. They're plants. Um, they pass their energy on only about 10%. A big whopping 10% gets passed from the producers to the primary consumers. These are the organisms that eat plants, like caterpillars or birds eating seeds. Those organisms pass on only 10% of their energy to the secondary consumers. So let's say a robin comes along and eats the worm. That's a secondary consumer. And that robin, if it got eaten by a hawk, would only pass on 10% of its energy. So you can see that there's a lot of energy here that's captured from the sun by plants and there's only a tiny bit of that energy that gets all the way up to the top of the food pyramid. 10%, remember that. Which trophic level has the least energy from sunlight? Would that be a producer, a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, a decomposer, or I don't know? Well, given our options, let's go back and look here. Um, they didn't have tertiary consumer on the list, so secondary consumer is as high as we had, and that would be a good answer. Decomposers work at all trophic levels. So decomposers break down dead stuff. Bacteria and fungi recycle nutrients. So dead trees, dead animals, other uh, Dead plants, even dead bacteria and fungi get recycled by their own kingdoms. So anything that dies on any level gets recycled by the detrivores. Yay detrivores, they help keep uh, dead stuff from piling up all over the earth. At what trophic level do decomposers, detrivores being a type of decomposer, what do they work? The producer level, the primary consumer level, the secondary consumer level, or D, all of them. And if you guessed D, you're absolutely correct. Food webs are a little bit uh, more complicated than food chains. They actually include lots of food chains. A food chain, for example, would be the purple saxifrage here, which is a plant, is eaten by the rabbit, so the energy goes to the rabbit. And then the rabbit gets eaten by the snowy owl, and that's pretty much a food chain. I don't think that Arctic wolves actually eat snowy owls. Maybe they do. This here is a food chain. When you connect everything together, you put all the food chains together, you get a food web. So a food web's a bit more complicated because it includes several food chains. So, well, if we ask the question, a bunch of food chains all connected together are A, a mess, B, the Amazon rainforest, C, a food web, D, a trophic forest, or E, I don't know. If you guessed they are a food web, you are absolutely correct. A food chain is a pathway through what? What do these arrows represent? If you are thinking energy, how energy moves through the ecosystem, you're absolutely correct. A food chain is a pathway through which energy moves in the ecosystem. And if you see this food chain here, where is the energy going? How is the flower getting its energy? 
what big yellow thing that we see in the sky should be here in the food chain to represent the energy that is being absorbed by the flour that to put carbon dioxide and water into the form of glucose. Hopefully you're thinking sun. The sun is the primary source for producers, aka plants in most ecosystems. Where do decomposers operate in this ecosystem? Decomposers eat dead stuff. At what level does dead stuff happen? Do chipmunks die? Do deer die? Do, do trees die? Do foxes die? Do crickets die? Does grass die? And the answer is yes, all of those things die. So decomposers work at all levels. Remember that, decomposers work at all trophic levels. If you're dead, they'll eat it. Here is a practice essay question. Compare and contrast the roles of these two organisms in the ecosystem. This is a snake. Snakes obviously do not get their energy from the sun. They might lay in the sun to get warm, but they don't, that's not how they get their food energy. Plants, on the other hand, don't go out and, and find things to eat like snakes do. They sit there, and absorb energy from the sun, and use that to put together carbon dioxide and water to make glucose. And between the snake and the grass, there might be, say, a grasshopper. A grasshopper might be eating the grass, and the snake might eat the grasshopper. Um, there is a really good video, which I will put in the notes, about abiotic and biotic factors. In the desert, abiotic factors kind of rule. The sand, the temperature, the rainfall are all really important parts um, of controlling what can live in the desert. So I suggest you take a little gander at this video about me in one of the national parks talking about biotic and abiotic factors. What factors would you want to know if you were going to hypothesize about what lived in an ecosystem? Humidity, temperature, soil, all of the abiotic and biotic factors. Well, if you were going to hypothesize about what lived in an ecosystem, you definitely would want to know all of this. If you didn't know the biotic factors, if you had all of this, you might be able to guess what lived there. But this is the best answer, D. Which ecosystem occupies the most space on this planet? Which one's the biggest dot? If you guessed the big blue dot right here, the ocean ecosystems or marine ecosystems, you're absolutely correct. The biggest chunk of water on the planet is in the ocean, and water is life for organisms. And so a lot of life goes on in the ocean. So let's remember what we learned earlier and try to answer this question. Which trophic level has the most energy to pass on? The primary producers, the plants in most, oh, most ecosystems, the primary consumers, what eats the plants, the secondary consumers, the organisms that eat the organisms that eat the plants, and the tertiary consumers that eat the organisms that eat the organisms that eat the plants. And remember, only 10% gets passed on here, so this is kind of a bad picture. This bar should be very much smaller, and this one should be very tiny, and this one should be barely visible. Um, because only 10% goes up the, up the pyramid here. So the most energy here, oops, excuse me, the most energy here is on the bottom. Primary producers have the most energy to pass on. Up here, least energy to pass on. If you wanted to hypothesize about what biome might be in a certain place, the key factor is rainfall here. Um, if you want to know whether it's going to be a desert or a rainforest, you need to know the annual average rainfall. If you're breathing, 
How are you interacting with abiotic factors? <gasps> What's in the air that your lungs are removing and adding to your bloodstream? Think about it. It's oxygen. And oxygen's an abiotic factor. In fact, everything in the air is an abiotic factor, unless you're breathing pollen. What is a taiga? Well, a taiga is a major biome, and it's usually kind of wet, lots of lakes, lots of snow. It's kind of boggy soggy. It's got spruce trees and other evergreens. It's too far north to grow deciduous trees. And two of the charismatic megafauna, or lovable animals that are easy to see, are the moose and the bear. All right, thanks for watching. If you can identify the producers and consumers in this ecosystem, which is also posted in the notes for this video, um, you'll be well on your way to doing well on many of the questions on the test. Thank you very much. Have a great day.